Hey guys, so welcome to your first um, session with Simple Solutions for Social Studies. So what you're gonna need today, you are going to need your Social Studies Lesson 1. So Lesson 1 says Introduction to Social Studies. And then you're also going to need your copy of the Simple Solutions Help Pages. I know that this is um, the correct set of help pages because it starts with a glossary, so make sure you have your Social Studies help pages and not your math help pages, okay? You're also going to need a pencil or a pen and a highlighter. If you don't have a highlighter, that's cool. You can just use your pencil to underline instead of highlighting. That is absolutely fine. So today I am going to model for you um, what your simple solutions um, for social studies should look like um, and some tips to help you get your lessons completed. So on a normal day, we would always um, read the questions first. And I like to read the questions first so I know exactly what I'm looking for when I go back to the passage. So take just a couple of seconds and glance over your questions so that you know exactly what you should be looking for um, when it's time to go back and read the passage. All right, so now I am going to read the passage to you, so be sure to follow along with me. If you um, hear me say an answer to one of the questions that you've already read, highlight it and go answer it on your Simple solution sheet, okay? So, introduction to social studies. Social studies is a general term that includes history, geography, and economics. It also includes the study of relationships among families, communities, cities, and countries. Social studies examines the history of people, their interactions with others, and the places that, they, that have shaped them. Cultures and government are also important topics in social studies. Democracy depends upon knowledgeable and informed citizens. Learning social studies helps us make important decisions in our own lives. This book introduces new social studies material and revisits important topics and questions throughout the book. Many questions can be answered using the information in each lesson. You will also need to recall information that you may have learned a while ago. An item may direct you to an earlier lesson in this book or to the help pages at the back of this book. The help pages include a glossary, maps, and other important tools to help you learn. New vocabulary words are in bold type and are defined in the lessons. You may also refer to the glossary in the help pages for the definitions of words. So hopefully you caught a couple of answers to the questions here, but if not, we are going to go over them. So number one says, the help pages are located in the blank of the Simple Solutions book. Now, we don't have actual books, we've been making copies, but the answer is actually in the passage. So if you go to paragraph two, Kind of in the middle of that paragraph, you should highlight a sentence that says, an item may direct you to an earlier lesson in this book or to the help pages at the back of this book. So if you have your highlighter, you need to highlight that text evidence there that answers our question. Okay, if you don't, use your pencil to underline that sentence. And then I'm going to write in my answer here for number one. The help pages are located in the back of the Simple Solutions book. So back is going to be the answer to number one. So make sure you write that in. All right, number two says, what will learning about social studies help you to do? A, understand cultures and governments. B, take part in the government of the United States. C, make the best decisions and be a good citizen. Or D, all of these. So I think that I'm gonna go back to the first paragraph, okay? And I am going to skim the first paragraph to see if any of these sound familiar. Hmm. If you think you have the correct answer, go ahead and circle it. And hopefully you circled D, all of these. Okay. 
and make sure that you highlight your text evidence there. All right, number three, hopefully this one's easy peasy. Hopefully that you, hopefully you've learned these words before maybe um, in second or third grade. So number three says list the four cardinal directions. And I see a compass right here with some letters. So hopefully you know what the letters on that compass stand for. You should have north, south, east, and west. Go ahead and write that in. Those are the four cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west. Okay, so the next few questions ask us to go to our help pages. So it says, find a map of the United States in the help pages, use it to complete the following items. So pull out your help pages, and we are going to flip until we find a map of the United States. So let's find this sheet. All right, and question number four wants to know, what is the capital of the state that you live in? So hopefully we all know that we live in Kentucky and hopefully by fifth grade, we know the capital of our state. But if you are not sure, quickly find Kentucky on the map. It's right here. And there is a state, I'm sorry, there is a city listed within our state. The only city that's listed on here is our capital, okay? So if you put that the capital of Kentucky is Frankfurt, then you are absolutely right. Go ahead and write that down. Frankfurt. Okay, number five, we're still gonna need those help pages. We're still gonna need our map. So what is one state or body of water that borders the state that you live in? So once again, we are looking for Kentucky on our map. And the word border just means touches. So we can all have different answers here. You want to find a state that touches Kentucky or you can find a body of water that touches Kentucky. I think that I am going to go with the state. I think I'm going to choose Tennessee. You don't have to choose Tennessee, but if you look on your map, Tennessee does border Kentucky, so I'm going to write it. So go ahead and put in whatever you would like. Like I said, we don't have to have the same answer here. You are looking for something, either a state or a body of water that touches Kentucky, okay? All right, friends, so number six, we're still gonna look at this map of the United States. Number six says, what country borders the United States to the south? So whenever I see the word south, I'm going to underline it and I am going to draw a down arrow because according to my compass here, south is down. So I'm gonna underline south, I'm gonna draw a down arrow. And believe it or not, on this map, there are three countries shown here. So I know that the United States is a country and that's shown right here, that's our country. Above the United States is another country, and that's Canada. And below the United States is a country, and it's Mexico. So which one of these countries, Canada or Mexico, borders us to the south? Remember that we said south is down? So that means our answer for number six has to be Mexico. Mexico is our neighbor to the south. So go ahead and write it down. Okay guys, so number seven, and some of you may know this without even looking on your map. 
the name of the very long river that begins in Minnesota is the Blank River. So I'm gonna pull out this map because it's a little bit easier to see. But here's Minnesota. Nope, sorry, that's not Minnesota, this is backwards. There's Minnesota, okay? And there is a river that starts in Minnesota and it flows from north to south, like all the way down um, the United States. And if you said that river is the Mississippi River, then you are absolutely correct. Go ahead and write it down. Okay, so for number seven, you should have the Mississippi River. All right, guys, number eight. This one's easy peasy. This landmark honors the first president of the United States. I want you guys to underline first president. I hope that we know that our first president was George Washington. So the only answer that makes sense here is the Washington Monument. Go ahead and circle it. Okay, and now we are looking at the three branches of government. And for this question, we are going to need our help pages. So flip through your help pages until you find um, the page about the branches of government. So this page right here, I'll give you a second to find that. Let's actually flip over one more page. This is a better chart for us to look at. Okay, so flip over one more page so you get to this flow chart of the three branches of government. I think this page may help us a little bit more. Okay, so we know that the three branches of government, according to our help pages, are the judicial branch, the legislative branch and the executive branch. So they want us to look at this specific duty here and decide which branch of government is responsible for, for that part of our, um, of our government. So we need to figure out which branch makes the laws. So let's go to our help pages here. Take a second. Let's see who makes or who writes the laws. And when you have it, go ahead and write it down. And according to our help pages, the legislative branch is in charge of writing or making the laws. So the legislative branch is our Congress. So that's our House of Representatives and our Senate, okay? So now let's go back to our um, help pages and let's figure out who is in charge of enforcing the laws. So look at your chart here. When you figure out who is in charge of enforcing the laws, write it down. And you should be writing down the executive branch and the executive branch is made up of our president, okay? So he is in charge of enforcing the laws. And so that leaves interpreting the laws. So this group of people figures out if laws are constitutional or unconstitutional. So the last branch of government that we have left is the judicial branch. That is our court, our Supreme Court. So let's write judicial in the last box and you are finished. I will see you guys for lesson two.